Hi everybody, welcome to There's Life After Mental Illness. I'm Bill McPhee, your recovery expert. And recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anyone else other than who you are today. And remember, there is life after mental illness. Today's uh, vlog is I'm answering a question from uh, Victor. Uh, Victor talks about uh, his son, uh, a few points, uh, different, he's going to group therapy, he's uh, getting an injection, he has a schizoaffective. So we're talking about uh, Victor's uh, uh, letter and uh, how his son, uh, you know, kind of prefers medical marijuana as well. So we're going to get into a little bit about that. In tomorrow's vlog, we're going to take you uh, to Niagara Falls. We're going to be uh, in Niagara Falls and we're going to just kind of do a slideshow for you, show you some of the scenery in Niagara Falls and uh, have a nice day out uh, doing that. So I hope you want, I hope you like today's vlog and remember that there is life after mental illness. Have a great day. Hey, hi everybody. Um, today I'm reading a letter from Victor. I'm going to read the letter and then I'm going to go over it again and uh, pick out some pieces and comment on them. So Victor says, uh, I've enjoyed your videos very much. Thank you. A question I have revolves around our 25 year old son who was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder two years ago. He is very hesitant and belligerent about taking medication. He will accept lithium because it is naturally occurring element, but hates his shot. He wants to scrutinize all meds with researching everything that is suggested, and argues with his provider regarding his medicine amounts and types. He is a firm believer in medical marijuana, and I have shown him reports about the negative effects of cannabis with psych psychotropic drugs. He's convinced that marijuana helps him deal with the symptoms much better, although we see that there is an increase in the positive effects of schizophrenia when the positive symptoms of schizophrenia when he thinks he smokes it. He currently is in a day program and that is not going too well. He is angry to be there and not, not participating in the good in the good that it could offer to him. His mother and I are frustrated. Any advice or thoughts? Well, let's go back into this letter and, and, and talk about a few things. <clears throat> First of all, he says his son's uh, 25, who was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder two years ago. Basically, schizoaffective disorder basically means is that you have some symptoms of schizophrenia, and then you also have some symptoms of bipolar illness. So it's called schizoaffective. Now, um, so he's 25 years old and he was diagnosed a couple of years ago. First of all, on that point, I just want to say that that is, is a young time to be um, diagnosed. Like, like, you know, he's, he's young and he's only been diagnosed for two years. So a lot of times what happens is this illness drags on for, for many years and um, uh, it takes quite a while to recover. As you know, a lot of you know, I was on the couch for five years basically doing nothing and wasted my life for five years. So uh, Victor's son is in the two years dealing with this illness, which is a very short time. So, you know what, sometimes we have to cut some slack and, and not be in too much of a hurry for, and look at recovery because the physical body takes a, a toll. Mental illness takes a toll on the physical body as well as it does on, the, on our mental part, on our brain as well. So let me just say that. It says that um, he, is, he is very hesitant uh, and belligerent about taking medications. Well, you know what, you, you, you are not alone. Many, many people uh, have that same uh, thoughts, um, are in that same boat, and, um, you know, are very hesitant to, about medication. It's uh, uh, a normal thing to do. Uh, it's a normal reaction. Uh, and 80% of people uh, who go on medication will eventually... Um, 
relapse. They'll go off their medication and they'll relapse 80% of the time. And I actually did that as well. I went off my medication and uh, six months later I relapsed and uh, I was totally delusional again and uh, my brain break played tricks on me. Um, so, so he says, uh, um, okay, it says uh, he will accept lithium because it's a natural occurring element but hates his shock. So the reason that he's on lithium is because of the effect of lithium is a really, really good uh, gold stand kind of thing for bipolar illness. It's really, uh, came out, lithium is a very old drug, came out many, many, many years ago. I'd say maybe in the, oh, I don't know, maybe in the 60s or so. Uh, and, uh, but lithium has really been uh, known as a miracle drug for treating bipolar because it's such a, it is a, uh, an amazing drug. It is really a miracle drug. Uh, but um, with the lithium, so that's probably why he's on the lithium, uh, because of the schizoaffective part of the effective part of, of the diagnosis. And then it says he hates his shot. So this is telling me that he also gets a, an injection, a, a shot, a medication. He wants to scrutinize all meds will, uh, with researching everything that is suggested and argues with his provider regarding his medicine amounts and types. Well, you know what? It's good to be aware of, of what we're taking and have education about what we're what we're taking, our meds and uh, the illness and, and everything like that. But still, um, even though it's good to know and be updated and understand what you're taking and everything like that, we still have to have the respect of the physicians, the psychiatrists, uh, who who have years and years of experience with patients, with different outcomes, with with that. So even though it's a good thing that we research what we do, we still need to we still need to um, listen to um, the physicians and our psychiatrists just because of their experience in treating many many people. So even though that's kind of a good thing that you want to be educated about things, but you also have to, you know, look at the uh, professionals and take their their suggestions uh, uh, to heart as well. Now we go. We say here uh, he is a firm believer in medical marijuana, and I have shown him reports about the negative effect of cannabis with psychotropic drugs. Well, <clears throat> I want to tell you that <clears throat> marijuana and mental illness does not mix. They do not mix. You know, I, I was uh, doing a presentation maybe six months ago with uh, Dr. Cortese in uh, St. Thomas. And uh, he said, you know what, he said that he, he gets this question all the time. And he said, you know what, I don't care if you're 30 years old or 40 years old. Do all the marijuana you want to do. But he said, in young people, in teenaging, teenagers, in younger, the early 20s, what happens is that our brains are developing until we're in our early 20s. And what marijuana does to a developing brain, it's terrible. It, it really plays havoc and everything like that. So, you know what, Victor, all I got to say is that, you know what, I can understand medical marijuana, but when it comes to psychotic illnesses and antipsychotic medication and the nature of the brain disorder of schizophrenia, schizoaffective, you need to stay away from all that marijuana. Stay away from it because basically our brains are still developing when we're in our early 20s. So you know what, just quoting Dr. Cortese, if you're 30 and 40 and you want to spend, smoke all the marijuana you want, Go for it. But as a developing brain that develops until you're in your early 20s, stay away from it because marijuana, antipsychotics, and a brain illness do not mix and you're just causing trouble. <clears throat> now, come back to that as, point as well. Um, okay, he's convinced that marijuana helps him deal with symptoms such as better, although we see that there is an increase in positive effects. What he means there about the positive effects is the positive symptoms when he's uh, smoking marijuana. There's an increase in the positive symptoms. And the positive symptoms are, uh, you know, hearing voices, uh, being delusional, 
having hallucinations, illusions, uh, our senses become heightened. Those are positive senses and these things are increased, he's saying, Victor's saying they're increased when they've noticed he's been smoking marijuana. Okay, uh, then the last it says, uh, okay, he's currently in the day program and that is not going too well. He is angry to be there and not participating in the good that it could offer him. So basically, again, here he's just young into the illness. He's only been diagnosed two years. Um, it takes a while to get, get back on track to pick the pieces up from our, our lives. And so, you know what, that could change with the group over time. I mean, I was very skeptical of my recovery and very angry and very, very, very sad and depressed and, and everything like that. Okay, so a couple things here. Now, I'm not saying this about you, Victor. I'm not saying that this isn't your case. But I just want to tell you that a lot of times I receive letters about, you know, mostly, you know, my son or daughter doesn't want to take medication and they don't, they, 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 you know, they don't want to take medication. I got to tell you, you have to beware of this. You have to understand, is the tail wagging the dog or is the dog wagging its tail and that expression means that in a person are they running the show in your lives I understand that we feel sorry for people who are dealing with mental illness that it's a very very serious illness and that people have a rough life and we feel sorry for them, we want to help them, we, we bend over backwards, everything like that. But, the tail cannot wag the dog. You have to take control in your household, and you have to treat a person with mental illness as a child, and tell them what is good for them, and what is not good for them. And you know what is good for them. You know that marijuana isn't good for them. So that, but you have no control over it. That's the tail wagging the dog. You need to negotiate with your son or daughters. You need to tell them, this is the rules. You're going to do this, this, this. It's negotiation. This is what it's all about. Because if it doesn't change, if you're going to have the tail wagging the dog, and it's not going to change for year after year after year after year after year, you're going to be 25 years down the road in a senior, ready to go into a senior citizen's home with your children living in the basement, with your sick son or daughter living in the basement. So the time is to really realize, and you need to get this across to your loved ones, is that we make choices every day. We make choices every hour. We make choices every minute. And the better those choices are, the better your life is going to be. Now sure, do we make wrong choices and do we make bad choices sometimes? Absolutely. But the goal is to make more right choices than bad choices. And obviously here we see some bad choices. And if you're caught up in that with bad choices and you're, you're enabling that, you can't do that. You need to set some perimeters, some boundaries, some rules, and you can't have the tail wagging the dog because it's going to go on and on and on and not get better. Anyways, those are my thoughts, uh, Victor. And I'm not necessarily talking to you when I'm talking about the tail wagging the dog. It's a very, very common thing. Is that we care about people, we want to help them, we want to protect them, but you can't let them run your life. You have to make them make good choices. And if they're incapable of making good choices, you have to force good choices on them. Okay, thanks, and uh, have a good day. Hi. Bye. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And also be able to uh, send me your questions at Bill at BillMcPhee.ca As well, for more information, go to BillMcPhee.RecoveryExpert.com Links will be in the description below.
Come back for another vlog tomorrow. And remember, recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anybody else other than who you are today. And there is life after mental illness. Have a great day.